Drama bin drama Arab drama, Sheikh drama, Asisi drama zote pamoja. Ay ya ya For a moment there it seemed as if the BBI train was going to be delayed. Yeah, the departure from the station was going to be delayed to accommodate one Deputy President William Samuel Ruto and his demands. And the truth is, it got very confusing. We heard that all oh, ODM want changes in the BBI draft bill. Then we heard another story that President Huru Kenyatta was keen to accommodate at least some of the suggestions by the Deputy President. We were even told that actually what had happened is that six politicians from Team Keleweke had gotten together with six from Team Tangatanga and they had negotiated and renegotiated and come up with a few irreducible minimums yeah, that the Ruto camp wanted included in the BBI. Changes made to the BBI. Now, 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 I'm sure you'll agree with me that it is not possible that all those stories were correct. In fact, what is the most likely thing is that most of them were not correct. Because on Thursday, December 10th, 2020, the signatures for the BBI actually 4.4 million, were handed over to the chairman of the IEBC and his team, clearly signaling that the BBI train had already taken off. It has left the station. And you know when a train has left, it has left. If you missed it, that's it. However, if you think the drama is over, huh, think again. In my view, the drama has just started. Now, there should be no problem in getting enough county assemblies across the nation to okay the BBI bill. That should not be a problem. But that does not mean that step will go through without any drama. <laughs> that one you can be sure of. There'll be drama. And when the bill gets to parliament for voting, there's going to be drama. Yeah, but of course that drama will not stop the BBI bill from being passed through and straight to a referendum. Where again, we should expect a lot of drama. But that should not stop the BBI referendum from sailing through. And this drama is what Kenyans should be worried about. And I will tell you why. It's because it is not spontaneous. It is not coming from people on the ground. No. It is organized opposition against the BBI. Very well financed and organized opposition against the BBI. Now, I appreciate the fact that there are very many people in Kenya, including great friends of mine, who are very much opposed to the BBI and nobody has paid them any money. They have opted yeah, to oppose the BBI based on their own personal thoughts and beliefs. Those Kenyans exist, yeah, and I'm not worried about them. People are allowed, very much allowed, to have their own views. But what should be of great concern to all of us are the backroom deals, the backroom financing, the well-laid plans to throw a spanner into the works. You know, I was watching with bated breath 
as these stories emerged yeah, about how the BBA was going to be changed, adjustments made, etc., etc. And I was saying to myself, this is a trap. If the BBA stops now, <laughs> getting it started again was going to be a major issue. Friends, never forget that we're dealing with politicians here. <laughs> never ever forget that fact. Because what would have happened yeah, is that the minute a few changes would have been accommodated, then the floodgates of suggestions and more changes would have opened. Yeah. Why did you accept these small changes from the deputy president's camp? Why don't you want to accept ours? <laughs> that kind of talk. And of course, after these changes, it would have meant going back for new signatures. Yeah, because what people signed for would not have been the same thing after the changes were made, which would have meant using more money. An argument that those pushing for changes had shelved. Yeah, because the truth is that the other side of the political divide has had a very long time to present their views, to present their suggestions, to present their changes. So clearly, this was a trap to stop the BBI train. Nothing more. And this seems to be the same view the BBI principles President Uru Kenyatta and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga also have because they directed that the signatures be presented to the IABC with no changes to the bill. Fortunately for them, they saw the trap which they could have easily missed. What that should very clearly tell you is that the DP Ruto camp has not stopped. They have not given up. And going forward, they are not going to give up. Indeed, my fear is that their attempts to throw a spanner into the works are going to get more and more desperate going forward. Which is not a good thing. I mean, you don't start playing around with a matchbox close to a petrol station. You just don't. And the truth is, life is very difficult in Kenya right now. Yeah, Problems caused by the virus, which hit an economy that was already limping badly. We're in trouble yeah, long before the virus manenos came along. So now you can imagine how difficult things are. People have lost livelihoods. People are bitter. People are worried. Their children have not been going to school for all year. People have had all kinds of domestic squabbles. Yeah, because they're not used to being at home all the time. With the other half, many businesses have closed. Naturally, in that kind of uh, environment, Inciting people is very easy. And you immediately know that people have been incited when they start talking very emotionally against the BBI. Yeah. You know that people have been incited when you hear them saying something like, this BBI rubbish. <laughs> and most of these people are very educated people. They must realize when they say this BBA rubbish, they're insulting over two years' work. They're insulting the intelligence of the people who put together the BBI bill. Folks, that is why I'm very worried about what will happen to our dear country going forward. These desperate measures to stop the BBI are not a good thing. They cannot end well. In my view, the right thing to do as a patriotic Kenyan 
is to wait for the referendum and then make sure you cast your vote against the BBI. If you're against the BBI, it is okay to educate Kenyans, show them yeah, where the BBI is going to completely mess up the country. Show it to them clearly. Explain in simple language yeah, how it is going to affect Kenyans negatively yeah, and influence Kenyans to vote against the BBI. But when it gets emotional, people just call the BBI rubbish. When people start focusing on points like this is not the right time, BBI is not a priority, then one knows immediately that there's something very wrong here. Yeah, and it is not a good thing for our country. Those who have been with me for a long time will know that I've never held a brief for anybody. I have never supported any side blindly. And therefore they will know that I speak the truth when I say, if those opposing the BBI had given me convincing reasons why the BBI is bad for Kenya, I would have supported them immediately. But I have waited and waited. There have been no concrete arguments that have fully convinced me that the BBI is wrong, that the BBI will mess up Kenya. Yeah. And yet we know that the people behind the BPI, we have a very experienced politician in Ray Odinga, who has seen it all. And that's not all. Some of the suggestions in the BBI, like the one about an expanded executive, were in the original Bomber's draft. I remember very clearly prominent personalities like Professor Yash Palgai told us that by expanding the executive, it would reduce tensions during elections. It would reduce the winner-takes-it-all mentality yeah, that adds to the tensions during general elections in Kenya. In fact, all the drafts, yeah, leading up to the 2010 constitution, all of them had an expanded executive, which was massacred by politicians. And in politics, we know very well that the time to change a constitution is when there is political consensus right across the political divide. And right now, since the handshake, we have the main opposition party in Kenya, ODM, reading from the same script as the ruling party, Jubilee, at least a major faction of it. And although money is important and there's no money, yeah, the political reality is that you don't change constitutions when the money is available because you'll never get to change it. Because maybe when the money is available, there's no political consensus. Where will that take you? Anyway, if you took in my previous video, where I focused on the selfish interests of each of the major players, yeah, the two major political forces for the BBI, and the one major political force against the BBI, then everything becomes clear. In my view, it is very sad, but it seems as a country, we need to start bracing ourselves to go through a very dangerous time in our politics. It's very sad, but that seems to be the reality. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.